What's up guys, my name is Austin Black and this is Vintage Lenses Part 2. Okay, so we're starting with the Canon FD uh, 50 millimeter f1.4 lens. This thing is legendary. They made so many of these. So many people own this lens. You can pick it up for like 50 bucks. Uh, there were a lot of these produced, but we're gonna shoot wide open. All right, let us stop down. We're gonna get that little little peek out of the sun there. So these Canon FD lenses have great colors, great contrast levels. They're great to adapt to Sony cameras. I really love shooting with these. They just produce such a cool look. There's some cherry blossoms behind you that I'm gonna try and get in the frame. And one, two, and three. So another thing I really appreciate about this lens is I love the focus wheel. This thing is super smooth. I don't even care that it's manual focus only. Okay, so. We are noticing that the bokeh is just freaking gorgeous with this lens and it's really giving that 3D pop that we look for. Okay, so this lens, verdict is this thing is a freaking beauty of a lens. Uh, you should definitely pick it up. It's so cheap, like there's no reason not to pick one of these up. Next though, we are going with the big boy. Okay, so the big boy is the Nikon 300 millimeter f2.8 uh this lens is from the 70s and it's freaking huge Here, let me just set that down on the dirt there <laughs> huh so i literally brought my monopod just for this lens uh it's got a tripod collar here so we're just going to clip that right on like so and uh we're gonna get some stable shots Okay, so Kristen is way back there, but we're gonna get some insane shallow depth of field right here. This is gorgeous. So why would you shoot portraits with a focal length this tight? The answer is you can get the type of bokeh from a close-up picture with a different lens from a full body picture with this lens. So focusing and getting this lens stable is quite the challenge from time to time but it really is cool for portraits. Okay, that's, those are really good. So this lens was designed in the 1970s. I think this copy is from 1977. Um, they still go for quite a bit of money. I think this copy is about $500, but I would highly recommend it. I mean, optically, it's really good. Uh, you do have to manual focus, but that's not really an issue for this type of thing. So yeah, this is a pretty good lens. It's really bulky and hard to use for stuff like this. If you're running and gunning, I don't recommend it. Uh, I'm not much of a wildlife photographer, so maybe this wouldn't make sense for me financially, but I like it. It's fun for portraits. I don't know if it'd be fun for professional portraits. Okay, so next is uh, a lens from the USSR. It is the legendary Helios 44-2 58mm f2. This is the quintessential Russian vintage lens. It gives you this crazy swirly bokeh. Uh, this is a later copy of it, but it still does say made in the USSR, which is kind of cool. But for this one, we're gonna try and find some trees, try and find some interesting backgrounds that are really gonna swirl. Okay, so we are looking at these cherry blossoms right there as the background for the Helios 44-2 that we're gonna use. I think it's gonna be really cool. All right, so one interesting thing about this lens, you think you're at f16 and you're actually at f2, which is wide open. Uh, you're gonna wanna shoot wide open with this lens. That's where you get the full swirly effect. And I'd really recommend trees. I think trees are like the nicest thing to get the swirl from. Now manually focusing with this lens is a little bit of a challenge, but... Okay, so you want to see what it looks like without trees, maybe. Let's shoot in front of this house. Kristen's going to go in the middle of the street, and we're going to see what we can get. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Kristen in the middle of the street. And, oh, go further, further. 
Okay, so you definitely are gonna notice that the sharpness dramatically falls off outside of the center. So with this lens, always frame up your subject in the middle. You can crop it later if you wanna compose after the fact, but it's really gonna drop off. But it's a super nice lens, I love using it. The build quality is meh, but that effect is just cool. You, there's nothing like it. So next is one that I'm actually really excited to use. It's another Nikon lens. This is the 135 f2.8. Uh, this is another one from the 70s and 80s. Um, it's a super nice aperture for a lens, this telephoto from that era. So I'm really pumped. I totally just left my camera face up with the sensor. That is insane. Oh my gosh. You should, you should roast me for that. But this 135 is really cool. Uh, it really holds up sharpness wise. I've tested it a lot. Let's see what we can get with it. Okay, so like the 300 mil, you're gonna get some crazy bokeh. Maybe not quite as much, but the form factor is way more practical. You can get handheld shots with this thing in just about any circumstance. I honestly think that this lens would still hold up for portraits. Uh, keep going, keep going. Right there. Yeah. And one, two, and three. I like that. Look at me, very straight face, very moody. Okay, so I love this lens. Kristen says she's taking it out on your next photo shoot. I agree, this thing's awesome. Uh, I don't know exactly how much you can pick these up for. I think between 100 and 200. And for that price, I mean, it's really nice. For these tele lenses, I really think that you, you gain a lot by manual focusing. You don't really need to rely on the autofocus. So, I think that this is a really cool lens even today for portraits. So this last lens is kind of like the little lens that could for me. This is the Canon FD 35 millimeter f2.8. These are really common and they're super cheap, but they're really high quality lenses. You can pick one of these up for 20, 30 bucks. I mean, you can find them anywhere. You could find them at an antique store, but they surprisingly just have great results. There's nothing special about this lens on paper, but when you use it, it's just really nice. It's really cinematic. I love using it for video as well as photos. So it's really no secret that 35 millimeter is like my favorite focal length. Uh, I'm super, super pumped to try this out. I haven't really taken many pictures with it, but it's just the type of lens that you can just walk around with and just get really cool images. Okay, so with this lens, you really can get bokeh, but that's not really what it's for. This is going to have the least shallow depth of field of any of the lenses I've tested so far. But what's cool about it is it just gives this like 3D pop to it. Um, I love it, it's, it's just weird. There's like these intangible values with this lens that just make it super cool. So we're gonna shoot in this bush. Okay, let me get you on this side and I wanna, I wanna get a little bit of, of depth here. Okay, so we're gonna try and get a little bit of depth with this one. Let me have you right here. Oh yeah, like it, love it. Okay, so that is it. We tested five lenses and I think all five of them are great choices. If you're looking for an affordable lens, a first lens for your mirrorless camera, and you don't have a big budget, these are all great choices. I really love doing vintage lenses and look forward for part three coming soon.